Hello friends, I want to start this video by talking about sea stories. It's one of my favorite books of all time, Men Against the Sea. It's about Captain Bly and his crew's completely insane voyage from Tonga to the Dutch East Indies um, after they were marooned by the off the HMS Bounty. The story took place in 1787 and this book was published in 1933. Um, when I read this book today, my heart rate rises, my blood pressure increases, and um, I have an emotional reaction to some of the passages and the things they went through. Another book I'd like to mention is Joshua Slocum's like famous and important book, Sailing Alone Around the World. That book was published in 1899, about his 1897 voyage, being the first person to ever sail around the world alone. Um, I also want to mention John Kretschmer's Cape Horn to Starboard, where he and a friend, a couple different people, sailed a Contessa 32 from Boston to San Francisco by way of Cape Horn. That book was published in 1986, and the voyage took place in 1984. The reason I'm bringing this up at the beginning of this video is to point out that sea stories and great adventure stories, they don't have an expiration date. Like I said, this book is from, this story is from 1787, and it gives me, like, physical reactions to read these tales. <laughs> um, some people act like YouTube videos are milk or eggs, and they uh, expire in short order. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how it works. Um, not to me, anyway. Um, and a lot of people have the misconception that YouTube videos are presented in real time. And I'm here to tell you that almost no sailing channels on YouTube present their work in real time. The exceptions of this might be if they're just doing refit. So if they're land-based and they're just documenting them refitting a boat or how-to videos, that's really easy to be close to real time because you have the stability of being on land and all that stuff. Um, the other possibility of someone, a channel that's close to real time is if they have a team of editors and they don't do any of the editing themselves. Um, I'm going to get into the details as to why this is, uh, in a second, but I just, I felt the need to make this video because I've gotten a number of questions about the timing of when things took place on videos that are published on YouTube versus real time. Um, some of the comments are really hateful about it, and some are just honest questions, people confused about the whole thing. Uh, I would also like to point out, there is no content, kind of, f video content in the world that is really produced in real time other than live sporting events. Uh, even, like, trashy reality TV shows on network television, those are filmed, like, a year prior. Um... And of course, any other kind of, you know, episodic stuff that you watch on TV is, you know, there's a very long production that takes place in that. Um, I posted one of these, one of the really kind of snotty comments I got about it on my Instagram. And I said, I think I said in the comments, I was like, I don't understand why people, you know, think that YouTube is supposed to be in real time. It makes no sense. And uh, somebody replied to me and said that... It's the social media aspect of our lives now. So things like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, we do post in real time. So people just assume, I guess, that YouTube is also just happening in real time, which is not the case when you do it to the scale that I do on my channel, as well as other sailing channels where we're filming adventures around the world. So some channels, sailing channels, um, will make you think that they're in real time because they hold back their content for Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and they release it in the same manner, in the same time frame that they're releasing their YouTube. So it looks like they're in real time. But the reality is if you look at where they are sailing in their videos, what oceans are sailing in, and you think about what season it is, sometimes you'll be like, oh wait, they can't be sailing in that ocean because it's actually hurricane season there now. Or 
oh, there's no way they're exploring that coastline because it's the dead of winter in that place right now. So that's one way that'll kind of clue you off. Um, and again, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter how delayed the content is. It really, it's people sharing amazing adventures and beautiful places. Um, but some channels do that where they'll, they'll hold back their s photographs and stuff and make it look like it's all in real time, which I find that to be a deceiving practice. So I share my Instagram in real time. I don't, I don't hide where I'm at. You can, you can look at my tracker and see where I'm at at any time. And I share everything on Instagram totally in real time. Um, and then I edit my, my episodic videos, uh, weekly videos, and I release them as they fall, um, with whatever's possible as far as timing goes. So let's talk about some of the reasons that sailing channels are not in real time. Um, and some of the challenges we have as, as vloggers to deliver material to you in whatever time is possible. Okay, so I've made some notes here on my laptop, so I might look over and reference those notes. Um, the number one reason for people that are, like I said, if you're not doing like the how-to videos in a refit, one of the main things is long ocean passages. So before I left Hawaii, I filmed a ton and all of my adventures from Oahu to the Big Island and I departed Kona, Kailua Kona for French Polynesia. Um, while I was in Kailua Kona, I edited a ton of episodes and I got them all uploaded to YouTube and queued up and then scheduled for my patrons to get while I was away. Uh, my shore team helps me in the States so that when I'm at sea, they make sure that everything's getting released to the public while I'm offline um, because that passage for me from Hawaii to French Polynesia was 26 days uh, I release a video every Monday I haven't I've only missed one Monday since 2017 and that was on my passage to Hawaii because it took longer than I'd expected um, and a successful YouTube channel really rely it, like uh it it relies on consistency you need to be consistent releasing content um so that's how you go about it when you're at sea you really you you film a bunch you have a bunch of episodes uploaded that way you know because there's no way for you to upload in the middle of the ocean nowadays with starlink that might be a possibility but like starlink has no coverage in the south pacific so it wouldn't be an option there um, so in the future that might change a little bit, but it doesn't change other aspects that we'll talk about <clears throat> So That's how you know one thing with ocean passages you have to think about, you know, is that time away from internet um, another speaking of reliable internet from I Uploaded a ton of videos when I was in Tahiti because I had good reliable internet at Papiete Marina and then from Papiete Marina to New Zealand I saw no reliable internet at coffee shops or anywhere public internet that was strong enough for me to actually get a video uploaded. I tried a bunch of places and I managed to get a number of videos uploaded tethering my phone to my laptop, um, which I would start it at night and just let it upload overnight. Uh, and that was the only way I got any episodes uploaded for most of my cruise through the South Pacific. Um, again, once Starlink's online everywhere, it'll make this job a lot easier to get things out uh but as far as the reality at this moment goes that's that was my experience another thing to think about is the amount of things we see in film versus the release schedule one of the reasons i'm making this video right now is because i've been very active in the last week and this is a good example for me to share with you the amount of stuff i film versus the amount that it's possible to release. Um, in the last nine days, I have visited seven anchorages. I've gone on four or five hikes. I've explored a, uh, the ruins of a former whaling station. I've snorkeled through sea caves and um, made passages along the coast. So if I was releasing it in real time, how do I share all of the crazy, beautiful stuff I've seen in one episode? It's just, it's just not possible. Um, so that that's another element you know there's first there's like n no access to internet second there's the amount of things you see in a short period of time 
versus a weekly release schedule. And I do release two videos a week, oftentimes, where if it's like a little bit of something, I make it a bonus episode because I think it's valuable content that people would enjoy. But it, you know, you run the risk, you don't want to make the episodes too long. Like my general weekly episodes are 20 to 30 minutes. They used to be like, you know, 14 to 20 minutes, but people have been asking for longer videos. So I do 20 to 30 minutes. And then my passage films are always one hour long. And those actually do way bigger numbers. Like more people watch the passage films, but those take a ton more of editing. And I put a lot of work into making those really, you know, like standalone films to where this, the weekly episodes are, you know, is like a vlog of my life and uh, the, the beautiful things I see. All of it takes a ton of time to edit, but those are the two different sort of formats. Um, I, I know that if I released an hour long video every week, the numbers would be very small. That's why I, I save the hour long format for either informative videos um, or the passage films. Uh, and, um, and even still, if you look at the analytics inside YouTube, like the average watch time of one of my regular episodics, people watch like nine minutes of the 30 minutes I produced. So then you run into that, you know, it's like, how much are you putting into it versus what are people actually watching? Um, but for me, I make films and videos that I would want to watch. So I produce, you know, I try to produce narrative content that shows what I experienced and I want to make it, I want to make you feel like you're here with me or you're experiencing it alongside me. Um, some, some channels don't care about their production and put out very, very minimally produced videos that require little to no editing, which is fine. That's their style. Um, other channels produce highly produced videos that look like a travel show and maybe they have a team or maybe they don't, but Another aspect is I have over 300 videos up on my channel. I started my channel in 2015 and started doing the weekly episodic since 2017. And I'm the only person that's ever edited any of the videos. So the workload falls entirely on me. Filming, editing, uploading, as well as actually living and boat handling and everything else. So it is a ton of work, which don't get me wrong. I absolutely love it. I love what I do. I love sharing everything with everybody. Um, but it is a grip, <laughs> a grip of time and work that goes into it. And so, you know, with, with people that have, if it's a couple or even a crew, then people share the editing responsibilities. Um, but for solo sailors, it all falls on us to knock out. Um, unless you pay an editor, which I would never do. I handle all my own editing. Another thing to know is people have commented my videos feel really raw and like, you know, unedited, um, which is funny because it takes a grip of editing to make a video feel that simple and unedited. Uh, I just try, I have a certain aesthetic I like, and so that's what I do. Um, I try to ca keep it kind of minimal. I keep, you know, I only use music when I think it needs to be there. I try to incorporate silence and the sound of the sea. Um, some people complain, they're like, we don't want any music. Other people complain, we don't, I don't want to see any sightseeing. I just want to see sailing. Um, the thing I've learned about the internet is there's no way you're going to make everyone happy. Like there's always going to be someone to complain. So I just keep producing videos again that I would like to watch, that I wouldn't find enjoyable. Um, and some of you also find them enjoyable. And that makes me very happy that I can share it with you. So I hope this clears up the uh, aspect of real-time versus delayed uh, posting of videos. It, uh, everyone wants to get it out as quick as possible, but there's just certain aspects of reality that make that not possible. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're watching your favorite YouTube channel, you know, cut them a little slack. <laughs> like uh, they're out there filming amazing things while also handling the ship and worrying about the day-to-day -day, um, and trying to find internet so that they can you know, get this up for all their viewers to enjoy. Um, we're doing our best out here. Um, thanks for watching all the videos. I hope you enjoy the adventure videos and the passage videos and the longer informative videos I do from time to time. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Again, 
Uh, I try to answer all the comments I can, but sometimes I have no internet for days and days, and it's hard to get caught up. So, But I always do my best to try to get back to everyone in the comment section. Thank you to all of you viewers. You guys make this possible. And I am happy to share all the beautiful things I see with you. Fairy wins until next time. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair wins until next time.